If you got your Bibles, turn with me today to the book of Romans chapter 8. The book of Romans chapter 8. Um, I want to deal with a subject the Lord been dealing with me about. And the title of this message is Your Road to Somewhere Has Another on It. Your Road to Somewhere Has Another on It. And people... I'm, I'm amazed that many people in Christianity find that they, uh, they call it the dry place for some place. You know, I'm in a dry place. Only dry place I know about in scripture is in hell. Well, God, you send demons to the dry place, so you're not in a dry place. And, but a lot of people think, you know, they're moved by the feelings of Christianity instead of the spirit of Christianity. And uh, a lot of people don't know what to do or when to do it or where to do it or how to do it. But yet we have someone that's on that same road that we're traveling. Now, the road doesn't move, but the journey does. Some people think just because they're on the road, they've done right, but the road don't move. There's not one road in America or across the world that's moving. It's the people that are on it or the journey is what's moving. So I want to read this scripture right here and I'm going to do a little teaching this morning here. Romans 8 verse 14 says, for as many, and I hope it is many, for as many are led by the spirit of God, not the spirit of circumstances, they are, now watch this, when you led by God, you change families. You become sons of God. For many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again. Now, how many Christians you know are in bondage? Well, you know, Brother Jesse, I tell you, I, I love the Lord, but I just got a problem with this and that. Now, why do you have a problem if you know you're a child of the king? Because you're focusing more on your problem than on your relationship and your family heritage that you have. For as many are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God or the family of God, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again. Now, let me give you a prime example of that real quickly, and I'll, and I'll get into this message. Before I was born again, I was a heavy drinker. I mean, heavy drinker. I'm not talking about party drinker. I mean, I started in the morning at seven o'clock with a glass of bourbon and pancakes or scotch. Or if I wanted a little dessert, a margarita. This is in the morning. OK, that would be all day long. And then I would play music at night. And by the time I finished the night, we were going over a fifth of whiskey a day. Now, watch this. I was in bondage. That, that was that was holding me captive. First time I got drunk was I was five years old and fell off the back of a boat. Mama beat me till I was sober. True story. Because my uncles would leave cans of beer hanging around. Have, you know, a five year old don't know. He just thirsty. I got to drink. <laughs> fell off the boat. Because mama was scared I drowned, but I was holding, I was singing up a storm, boy. I was just enjoying myself. But what happened was Satan used those things to um, begin to put me in bondage. I, I went to high school and everybody thought it was Kool-Aid and it was slow gin. Until my algebra teacher took a taste of it. And she didn't know. She was a wonderful person. Her name was Miss Conley, Ruth Conley. I think she's probably in heaven today. And she, she, she was about 75 years old then. And she didn't like flies. She called them vicious animals. <laughs> she had a bad habit of sticking her hand in her dress while she's teaching and pull her bra up <laughs> all the time. And one time she had a cold. And she said, oh, I tell you. I said, you know, I said, mama made me some Kool-Aid that'll help you. <laughs> and I gave her some of that slow gin. I used to bring thermoses to school, you know, in those days, you know, little thermos lunch you know. and so I said now drink it real fast <laughs> and sure enough she did she, I mean she, she swallowed quite a bit of it <laughs> about halfway through the algebra it was a great class <laughs> A plus B equals C come on <laughs> and I got suspended <laughs> for getting the algebra teacher drunk that's the kind of man I was and I grew up drinking Drinking, drinking. Now, when I got born again, I read a scripture. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
Now, most people say amen to that, but do they really believe it? Old things are passed away. Now, several people knew me before I was born again. They said, oh, you better not get around no booze because it was such a, you know, uh, temptation or whatever, or drugs or things, especially booze. I just enjoyed drinking. I did, you know, and, and I would tell them, but the Bible said old things are passed away. They said, well, I know it said that, but. Now watch this. This is now making a provision for failure when the word of God says you don't have to fail. See, old things are passed away. Yeah, but that's probably you need to get your butt out the way. I know it said that. You see, instead of walking the lane of freedom, they wanted me to accept bondage as a born again believer. But I have not received the spirit of bondage. Notice it says again. To fear, and that was their fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, or Daddy, Daddy. Now, the title of this message is Your Road to Somewhere Has Another on It. And I want to go back, read that first uh, 14 again. As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So write this down if you're taking notes. Led by the Spirit notes one thing, or actually two things, freedom. And instead of compulsion, see, some people think that God just, I was compelled. No, no. When you're led by the spirit of God, you're led in freedom. The thing that's always bothered me about Christianity, everyone that believes in Christ believes the spirit, the Holy Spirit's the comforter. Is that correct? Is he the comforter? And is Jesus the prince of peace? Is that true? Then why aren't people in comfort? And why aren't people in peace? Now watch this. If you break the poverty cycle in your life, comfort comes to you. And peace comes to you. And yet you criticized for believing in prosperity. Now somebody's lying. And it ain't me. And it ain't God. That isn't good English, but that makes good sense. For as many as are led by the spirit of God. So in other words, being led by the Spirit of God notes freedom, not instead of compulsion. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You can be criticized for being free, not free to sin. Why? Because you already left the sin family, now you're in the holy family. Are you hearing that? Now notice this, if you're being led by the Spirit of God, you're going somewhere. So your road to somewhere has another on it. You're not by yourself. So let me say that again. Led by the spirit notes freedom instead of compulsion. Now why work God wants us to be led? Write this down. We were created to be led. We are not left to our own wisdom or lack of it. You see, people say, yeah, but I don't know what to do. Well, there's sometimes in my ministry and in my life, I don't know what to do neither. But I have a road map called the scripture. I have a road map and in St. John, I believe is, uh, is it chapter 16? I believe it is chapter, I believe it's chapter 16, I think. It says, how be it when the spirit of truth has come that he would guide you. That's being led. A guide is always in front of you. If you got a guide behind you, he's lost. He don't know where you're going. See what I'm saying? How be it when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you in all truth. Notice he didn't say some truth. Now, I've said this before in other sermons. I want to say it again. There's been times when I had to make a major decision for Jesse the Planets Ministries or Covenant Church. Dealing with finance, dealing with people that I knew would affect people and affect things. And I really did not know what to do. And there were times that the Lord didn't tell me. That doesn't mean he wasn't leading me. See, so finally in frustration, I said, God, did you hear me pray? He said, I heard you the first time. I said, well, what do you want me to do? And I never forget this. He said, if I'm not telling you what to do, Jesse, make a decision and I'll back it. Which means you're growing in the knowledge of the truth. If you did everything for your child, they would grow up to be a complete idiot with a perfect brain. You've got to let them do some things, right? 
teach them to tie shoes. They get frustrated with that. But you know, and they made if they it, tie a knot or whatever, and, and you got to pick on a knot and all that kind of stuff. Or potty train. I mean, wouldn't that be kind of odd that you're dating and both of them wearing diapers? <laughs> now, you know, potty training pretty tough because you're constantly talking about bodily functions. Do you have to go? They're not even thinking about it. They figure, why? I got something that can handle this. But you have to break them from that. And in the process of that potty training, <laughs> uh, David Deloach told me this. I thought this was so funny. They started train, potty training uh, Catherine. I said, how y'all doing? He said, a lot of accidents. <laughs> but, yeah, but she's getting better. Oh, yeah, she's getting better. Yeah, but so what? It's not that. See, you are, you are the guide. And then you make it so nice. Ooh, you went to the party. You're talking about a toilet. You know, you just, just, just got to get them to think it. Because they start playing, they yeah, forget about that. And that's just common sense. So what I'm saying here, we were created to be led. We are not left to our own wisdom or lack of it. The Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, what's it? People say, I, I don't know what to do. If any man lack wisdom, ask. All you have to do is ask. Then it's your responsibility to receive what you ask. Write this down. We are not led when we go our own way. I've seen a lot of Christian people go their own way. We are not to be self-led, but spirit-led. Let me say that. Say it again. We are not led when we go our own way. We are to be self-led. We are not to be self-led, but spirit-led. There's sometimes I want to be self-led. There's some things I don't want to do. There's some people I don't want to like. That's called being self-led. There's some people I don't, I don't want to believe healing for them. I want to hurt them. Don't look at me weird. You do the same thing. When someone is rude to you. How many times you got in your car and said, I should have said this. And you're mad all the way home. The first person you come into contact, you attack them. And they were not the one that was rude to you. So that's being self-led. Instead of spirit-led. But there's a lot of times I don't want to be. But you got to understand, the minute I don't listen to the guide, I always do a, uh, you, you, you get off the road. Before you don't know where you are. And then it takes quite a while to find where you're supposed to be. See, your road to somewhere has another on it. People have asked me, oh, many ministers over the years, how did you do this? When I built this, place, I have never, ever built a building in my life till I built this whole complex. I either purchased a building or I leased a building. That's what I did. When God told me to build, I didn't want to build Covenant Church. I wanted to build a little chapel because I said, you didn't call me the pastor. But then God began to deal with Kathy because I was being self-led. She was being spirit led. She said, Jesse, we need to build a church. Well, who's going to pastor it? I said, God, I, I, I've never pastored in my life. He said, did I ask you? I said, well, no. He said, how many people working for you? At that time, I think I had, what, 25, 30 people working for me then. Something like that. And I, he said, well, I'll get somebody to help you. Oh, oh OK. See, because I had this fear. Oh, Jesus, don't make me a pastor. <laughs> Because, see, I, I, I don't really have the nature. <laughs> I, that's why I don't counsel much. When people want to counsel with me, I have a problem. Admit it, quit it, and forget it. Now, get out of here. Go on to the house. But, you know, that don't work as a pastor. That's how I am. What's the matter with you? Oh, I'm out of a job. You want a job? I'll find you a job. I'll find you a job today. Oh, but I don't want that kind of job. Shut up. You want a job? <laughs> Aren't you glad? <laughs> well, me, I'm going to go up the mountain. Oh, the mountain big. Well, get your shoes on. Let's climb. We'll get to the top. Yeah, we might slide down. So what? Who cares? Let's reach our destiny. Get to our destination. But a pastor, and I love people. I really do. I mean, I, I, I am. I'm a lovable man. But I, I get very frustrated when I see people's answers and they're going, but we, we, what are you afraid of? Afraid? Fear? Fear? Boy, and they go, 
then I make them afraid. I don't want to make them afraid. We have this, we have this slogan around just the president's ministry, suck it up. Just suck it up. Sometimes I run those balls so hard, you ought to see that. And I'm way older than they are, and they just don't have my stamina. They're walking around like Alice the Goon. Y'all remember Alice the Goon on Popeye? <laughs> That's way back in my generation. <laughs> Zombies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, but that. Oh, but that. Suck it up. One time we was in Australia. I mean, I, my Australian staff was praying that I go back to America. <laughs> they were, I was running them hard. And I had Fritz with me. Fritz out there. And Fritz is a go-getter son. Fritz can work. Fritz can work two or three men down. But I can't tell you, I got him in that truck. And I said, I mean, we closed the door before we started. I heard it. <laughs> I said, what's the, suck it up, Fritz. But I ain't slept in 48 hours. Well, we got another 48 to go. Come on, baby. Suck it up. We got to do it. People going to hell and you trying to sleep. Okay, boss. <laughs> okay, boss. <laughs> I am very. What's the word? Nice. <laughs> Intense. My partners support me. They expect me to get results. Not just lay on the ground, wait for an angel to drop a grape in my mouth. Come on. Well, brother, when I did that last service. I mean, I was dragging. I mean, dragging. so I got in that, that vehicle and they all drive on the wrong side of the road. You know, we call it the wrong side of the road. And all kind of, I said that and I went, oh, man. And I heard this voice from the back and it was Fritz. Suck it up, boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Yeah, we'll suck it up. All right, go. You see, I'm leading people. You see, people want to be led. That's what we have a problem today. In Congress, because not anybody want to lead. You see, I'm Jesse Duplantis and I approve this message. See, they don't want to lead. Now, leaders are going to get some, you're going to get some criticism. That's part of the plan. You, I mean, you know, you, you can't please everybody, but you try to please, you try to do the best you can. So we are not led when we go our own way. We are not to be self-led, but spirit-led. Now write this down. The work of the spirit is not an option. Or an extra. It is the mark of God's people. It's not an option or an extra. The work of the Spirit is not an option or an extra. It is the mark of God's people. You can see that when someone is being led by the Spirit of God. That doesn't mean we don't have trouble. That doesn't mean the devil don't attack us. You know, people think, oh, that man doesn't ever have any problem. That's not true. It's constantly, there's always something going on. The, um, if I would say naturally, the weight of this ministry is on this boy's shoulders here. I mean, it isn't because I've turned that over to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not worried about it. I do get concerned sometimes about different things because I find when people are a part of my ministry, I believe in results. You understand? And then tragedies happen. We had a terrible tragedy this weekend. Uh, someone called, uh, uh, lost a brother in a terrible accident. Well, well you got to pray for people. You got to help people because the word of God has valuable recipes for heart pain. You see, these people have heart pain. They lost a, they, they, they lost a brother in a, in a terrible car accident. And, you know, it's so sudden and it's so devastating. And, you know, as a minister of the gospel, you know, then the world expects us to be there. But they, but they don't want us to be blessed. They don't want us to be happy. But you see, so you're led by the spirit of God and you better have something in you because they're waiting to hear something that can pull them out of this devastation. See, so the work of the spirit is not an option or an extra. It is the mark of God's peace. It's the mark of God's people actually in peace, really. It's a marker. You can see that. And I mean, I've had, but let me tell you something. Some of these funerals have not been easy. I, I, I wonder for friends from Gardner. God, uh, they, I called it Gardner. They said Gardner. And uh, Jenny Twang and, and, a, and a wonderful daughter. Make a long story short. Her, her husband was a wonderful man. I mean, I developed a relationship with him. We would have more fun and we didn't spend a lot of time together. But when we did, it was, we were like two kids. It was wonderful. Well, all of a sudden I get this phone call that he has a major heart attack. Bam. Goes home to be with the Lord. I said, what, what, do, you, what do you, in fact, when I see him in heaven, I'm going to say, what would you do that for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and, you know, and we all know people go to heaven and they're the issue, but hey, wait a minute. We're still here. Yeah, that's not easy. Got grandbabies and, 
you know, and all the kinds of wonderful wife, wonderful family, got a great church. I'll be going there in November next month. And uh, I mean, just a blessing of the Lord. And sometimes you wonder, why did that happen? Well, he knows and God knows. But you go on, you know that every man's work or every person's work must be a continuation. You see what I'm saying? So what, what I'm saying here, when you understand that, yet I saw on Jenny and I saw on the family that, that there was a mark. And I said, what is it? Even though in the midst of this, there was a peace and an understanding. Ain't nobody liked it. That's not the issue. But my point is the work of the spirit is not an option and an extra. It is the mark of God's people. I feel sorry for people that don't believe in God. They're just going to take the whole hit, man. And grief will destroy people. Which brings me to this next point. Dead formulas become living truth when they're illuminated by the Holy Spirit. You know, somebody always seems to have an idea about something. Yeah, but what did God say to you? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I like that. Then he said there was something. Now, here's something. Like this. See, the church took the word son and kind of throwed it out. They called it the servant of God. No, 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 no. You're higher than a servant. You're a son of God. Or you're a, a daughter of the Lord. You're not. You see, for as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons, not the servants of God. You are a son that serves. You're not a servant that's trying to become a son. Some of the Christian religions, they call themselves Christian, say that they go through different uh, levels so they can get to the point where they become like a, 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 a church, a, a God family. When you already been made the righteousness of God. Amen. You're in the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're sons and daughters that serve. See, so these dead formulas that, something, that become living truth when they are illuminated by the Holy Spirit because he is guiding you and leading you. I've had so many people tell me at times, you're just too happy. I've had that happen to me so many different times. Well, it's not that I haven't had trouble, but I'm not focusing on my trouble. And I'm telling you something else. I'm not focusing on my happiness. I'm focusing on this Prince of Peace and this Comforter. I made up my mind. If he's the comforter, I am going to live in comfort. Now, let me make some of you mad. That's spiritually. And boy, you don't have a problem with that. That's physically. You don't have a problem with that. And that's financially. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, I don't think you ought to have that. I don't think I asked you. And I don't mean that to be rude. What I'm saying is simply this. I am only being biblical. All I'm doing is accepting what God said. See, when I first got saved, they wanted me to accept bondage that I might get drunk again, that I might become an alcoholic again. But Jesus said, oh, things are passed away. Are we going to believe this word or not believe it? One or the other. If we're not going to believe it, then throw it out. You see, people cannot understand simple answers. They got to make it complicated. When it's not complicated, what part of thou shalt not you don't understand? That's simple. Washington, D.C. is so complicated. No, it's not. You fix that overnight. Why does it take Congress, I don't know, 16 months to get something done? What are they hiding? How come they can print money and you can't? You print money, you're a counterfeiter. They print money, they're Congress. And I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Independent. What I, I, you know, I don't hate any of our leaders. I don't hate any of them. Why would I do that? God said, pray for your leaders. Amen. That you live a gentle, peaceful, quiet life. Now, there's some of them I don't like. But I do love. You see, and what happens is they're trying to find formulas. And all of a sudden, if you say something simple, oh, no. No. You see. The world makes it complicated because it hides it in the it hides all the stuff they want in the small print. I've said this here before insurance. You ever read your insurance policy? You know, really, it could be one line. Am I covered? <laughs> Am I covered? That's what you want to know, right? But buddy, they're going to hand you 47 paragraphs because it's all in the hidden, the details in the small print. See these wonderful commercials free. Then all of a sudden you see a little print. When really it's very simple. 
But people don't like simple. No, excuse me. People like simple. People that are controlling people don't like simple. Why? Because they want to lead you instead of you being led by the spirit of God. Write this down. God, uh, when you find, when, whenever you find submission to divine guidance, you have evidence of a divine truth. Let me say that again. Whenever you find submission to divine guidance, you have evidence of a divine truth. When God told me to build this place, use it again as an example. I needed some guidance. I needed people that knew how to build things. I didn't know Richard P. Shaw. He built my house. I didn't know any contractors because I bought everything I ever owned or leased it. Didn't need that. I didn't have to worry about plumbing and things in buildings because when you lease a building, they had all those kind of people that handled those things. Didn't have any, didn't know any, didn't, didn't, just didn't do it. Now, when God sent me out on this property, many of you know that I said, Hey, I have, I need guidance. What God wanted me to do was watch over his money. And I'm trying to talk to him about contractors. And I mean, I got very strong. The Lord said, well, go to Charles Green's church in New Orleans East, Faith Church. That was before Katrina destroyed that thing. Now they got a wonderful church taking it over. Make a long story short. He said, you will meet your contractor today. I said, oh, great. Got in the car, went over that. My Lord, we sat there. Pastor Green saw us, uh, the elder Green. And uh, make a long story short. And, uh, uh, he said, Jesse, just come say something. I said, hello, blah, blah, this and that. He asked me to stay up after service. They were having some little light. Uh, refreshments and things. I said, yeah, we'd love to be a blessing. Walked in and he said, I want you to meet this guy. His name is Ray Chronic. He said, this is Ray Chronic. He, uh, uh, he's, he, he, he was a contractor. He's retired. When I looked at him, the, the Lord said, that's him. I said, you what? He said, he said, yeah, I'm retired. I said, no, you're not. You're going to work for me. You're going to work for me today. He just looked at me. You man don't know me from Adam. He said, what? I said, the Lord sent me here. You want to miss God and go to hell? Listen to me. <laughs> I'm serious, buddy. I don't play no game. Uh, uh, uh. I heard the voice of the Lord, but I mean, I looked the devil in the eye and spit when I know God said something. I don't care. They can say what they want about me. He just looked at me. <laughs> he just laughed. I said, yeah. I said, you're going you're gonna to build this complex. We're going to work. You the man. I said, it'd be the best job you ever had in your life. And sure enough, we built this place. It took us four solid years to build all this, this whole complex. And I want to tell you something. Came in under budget, all kinds of. He said, I learned more about faith than I ever learned in my life around you. Why? Well, it wasn't because of me. I was being led by the spirit of God. So there was some decision. He asked me to make a decision. I said, I can't make that decision, Ray. Only you can. He said, I said, the knowledge is in you. He said, well, we ought to do this. Let's do that. See, you begin to work together before you know it. Everybody's being led by the spirit of God and you're winding up where you're supposed to be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So whenever you find submission to divine God, that you have evidence of a divine truth. Write this down. God's presence is the foundation of a God conscience. See, I kept the presence of God, his presence, so I could have a God conscience. When I was picking this out, this, this marble, this Italian marble, everything. When I looked at these, this carpet, these different things, these designs. You see this design right here? Isn't that beautiful? That was scrap. That was thrown away in the bin. This. This is cut off. This is the border to this. We put these in here this throw, and it hit me. I was walking. I was being divided. God, this is God's house. I looked and I went and I saw two pieces stuck together. Just, not stuck. They were just throw it. I said, stop. Go give me the pieces. I said, we're going to build us a, a design. There's no way I could do that. And, and, and Ray said, my Lord, just, that, that works. I said, he said, how'd you know that? I thought you said you, you, you never built that. I said, no, but I was being led by the spirit of God. Do you follow my point? And I walked into the Ritz Carlton up in Detroit. Boy, they had a beautiful garden. I said, how come? Church has always got brown carpet, burgundy carpet, blue carpet. I said, let's get some color in here. I said, if the Ritz Carlton can have that, why can't we? And you know what? <laughs> when we got there, they said, oh, well, nobody puts that stuff in churches. I said, I've been sent by the Lord. Boy, that freak him out. Oh, okay. <laughs> and God found me a wonderful man named Brother Kreider. And he helped me in those positions. It was all being led by the Spirit. Now, you may not think that's important, but that's very important when you find out how much that cost. God's presence is the foundation of a God conscience. 
See, prayer keeps open the communication with the spirit realm. Write it down. Prayer keeps keeps open the communication with the spirit realm. Spirit realm. Your, your road to somewhere has another on it. So I'm constantly praying. Prayer keeps that communication open. God, what should we do? Kathy just told you, I should have stepped out by faith on, on these extra uh, satellites and networks. Man, we need that money. Do you understand what I'm saying? Got to step out and believe God. I ain't for $40 here. Taking millions of this. and my, hey, You got to believe God that you're going to give. Got to believe God that you're not going to miss your monthly donation. Because I don't call it a donation. I call it do a nation. Mm-hmm. How many of you get my part in the letter? You know what I'm talking about. Hold your hand up. You get my part in the letter. Right. It's do a nation. I'm not just writing that to you so you can give me some money. Man, we're doing something with this thing. You know what? When really, sometimes I don't really want to do things. You know, you get tired just like anybody else. But, you know, you keep. So when I get a donation, I don't go, oh, <laughs> money. I go, oh, geez, I got to go to work. When I see that airplane, I go, my love. People go, boy, I said, I said, yeah. oh, God, got to go to work. Get in that thing and fly, 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 fly. Ooh, just preaching, going. Hit. I mean, the last two or three weeks, I've been in two cities every day, preaching in two different churches in two different states. Every, for the last, what, the David, two or three weeks. Man, foom, foom. sometimes you forget where you are. Man, I was in Detroit. They got me a Detroit Lions cap. Because they're five and old at this time. They gave me a Detroit, a Detroit, Detroit Lions uh, jersey. They gave me a Detroit Tigers. Man, they baseball team. Hey, man, now you know, I'm a nice man. And Rich is a good friend. He walks by and see that. He said, uh, uh, are you bailing out on us? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, because the Saints is four and one or something like that. No, no. You know, I said, but I mean, what are you going to I mean, what did you want me to do when they gave me the Detroit Lions cap? And then they go, oh, no, and just stomp on it. No, I can't do that. So the Bible said you become all things to all people. So when you're in Detroit, put that lion hat on, baby. Hey, you get to New Orleans. Put that no, no, no. I'm just talking. But I mean, it was just like, because I mean, this, this, this thing is big. I was asked by the Dallas Cowboys two, two years ago while they were playing the Saints to come pray in as the, at the Superdome or the Mercedes Benz Dome. Where did we get that? Anyway, but I'm talking about, yeah, uh, go, would you help us c- come lead the Dallas Cowboys in prayer? He played the Saints. I said, do y'all like me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're going to kill me in New Orleans. <laughs> I can't do that because Richie's going to tell him <laughs> he was at the Dallas Cowboys. No, no, I'm just talking. I mean, but I thought that was nice of them that they would ask. You get into a rock and a hard place sometimes. So how'd you fix it? Prayer keeps open the communication with the spirit realm. Oh, it's so good. Write this down. The Holy Spirit leads you, but does not carry you to your destination. See, now that's the problem with a lot of Christians. They want the Holy Spirit to carry them. No, he leads you. He don't carry you. You know, after you carry your baby until your arms hurt, your shoulders hurting. Sometimes ladies' hips are hurting because they got that baby. But as that baby grows, you're going to walk. I never forget one time we was in Hawaii. Um, and this was uh, uh, David and Heather's little girl. What was her name, baby? See, she's now Molly. Now, this is so funny to me. Molly, now she's a full grown teenager. She's a beautiful girl. But I mean, when, we, when you're at the Grand Wiley and you're walking up these hills, you know, this, this is a beautiful hotel. You're walking on that kind of stuff. Well, man, I mean, she was, how old, Kathy, three, four years old? And she get tired. And, uh, and so you, she wants you to hold her. Now, she's getting heavy now, you know, she's three or four years old. So you hold her. I thought, why are you just hurting? So they, they would say things, oh, don't you want your legs to be pretty? Don't you want your legs to be pretty? I thought, what are they say? See, if you walk up the hills, your legs are pretty. Makes your legs pretty. This is Holly and Helen. But Molly says, I don't care. I don't. I like ugly legs. I, I don't want to walk. Now we're trying to convince this child by walking that it makes her legs pretty. So, man, we were just switching her off. I carried her a while. Michael John carried her a while. David carried her a while. Holly carried her a while. We were just all hurting, man. And there she is. 
She wanted us to carry her. Let me say it again. The Holy Spirit leads you, but does not carry you to your destination. Why? You can't climb from height to height without effort. That's why he's not carrying you. You can't climb from height to height without effort. In other words, you got to do something. I wish I could just lay at my house all the time and just say, touch the world, Jesus. (laughs) Touch the world. Lord, let them see it on DVD. (laughs) Even the world don't don't believe that. Because if you if you have a, uh, a hit record, you got the tour. You got to get out there and work, buddy. You see some of these people, I mean, Beyonce and all that. I mean, they finish. They're coming off that platform. They are soaking wet. They've been dancing, screaming. Hey, I mean, uh, that's work. Pure work. What's well, the same way in Christianity? Same way with the gospel. Why do you preach so much? Well, you got you got a tour. If you want to call it that. If you're going to if to go from height to height, you got to have effort. If you're going to be a great guitar player, Steve, you got to practice. Am I correct? You can't just look at it and go, boy, that's a pretty guitar. No, you got to put your hand. You got to play. If you want to be a great piano player, I mean, you don't just go, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Great. But there are other songs that somebody might call upon you to do. You see what I'm saying? I wish we could like because I, 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 I've traveled in so many different nations. I, I, I want to speak that language so bad. I wish I could just put a disc in my brain. So instead of having an interpreter or a translator, I could just speak it. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to preach in sentences. You know, the Lord said, that if you'll walk with me today, God will bless you. Then they'll go, I'll say, God will bless you. I say, he's saying more than I said. I know he's saying more than I said. And I think, that ain't right. What did he say? He could have said, don't believe anything he says. I wouldn't have known. So when I went to Germany, I brought Pia Fortune. She's a German. Don't make her mad. Ask Ron. But anyway, praise God. No, she said, shut up. Praise God. I brought her. I said, now, Pia, she said, well, what do you want me to do, brother? I said, I want you to sit in that audience. Because she understands German fluently. She speaks fluent German. I said, and I want to make sure they are saying what I'm saying. So I would preach that. And I, I don't know if people thought I just liked Pia a lot, but I just kind of, I'd go... And she'd go. <laughs> you know, I guess maybe some people thinking, hey, he got a problem with that woman over there. <laughs> no, I don't have no problem. I just want to make sure that what I'm saying, they say it. Because, you know, I would say, you know, the Lord is so good. Dutchland. What did he say? <laughs> and Pia go. <laughs> now, you know, that's funny, but it ain't funny when you're preaching. Because, you know, you got to keep this all in your brain. And altar calls were the worst. Have them repeat a prayer. I'm going to ask you to say this. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the time they get back to you, you forgot what you said. It's got to go back three times before it comes back to you. That's not easy. <laughs> When I went and preached for Rick Renner in Russia, <laughs> that translator was one of the best, but he was too close to me. Come here, Ron. Come here, come here. Let me show you that. Right, Ron would be the translator, okay? Like this. Now, most translators, turn this straight. Usually I'm about like this and I'm preaching, and if I walk, they walk. They, if I lift my leg up, they're going to lift theirs. They just do, and it's a good translator. But this guy was like this. <laughs> so I kind of went, <laughs> and he come back. I smiled, I went, you're making me sweat, man. Go on. I mean, he, he said, well, they told me to stay close to you. I said, yeah, not on me. Don't, don't stay on me. Thank you, Rock. I said, not on me. I mean, I, mean my, I, was, I was sweating through my sleeve. But boy, he had me now. He, he was going at it. So fine. He was great. So fine. I just got between the pool, pulpit and him so, he, so I could get a little space. God was great. People got saved. That's not easy. But you see, I was actually using him as a guide. He was guiding my words to those people. Do you see that? So you can't, the Holy Spirit leads you, but does not carry you to your destination. You can't climb from height to height without effort. Write this down. Now, this is very important. He will lead you even through the accidents of life. Write it down. 
See, as many are led by the Spirit of God, how be it when the Spirit of truth comes? He will lead you even through the accidents of life. You see, people say, well, bad things happen to good people. I disagree with that. Good people happen to bad things. I reverse that. Good people happen to bad things. In other words, you can change some bad things. But the Holy Spirit will even guide you through accidents of life. I never wanted to be down in three airplane crashes. We almost got killed the other night. Where's David DeLoach? He's around here somewhere. David, am I right? I mean, David's on final. We're 1,300 feet off the ground. When you're flying in a jet at 1,300 feet off the ground, you're moving. You don't realize, you're moving. And what, some fool come up under us or somebody cut across your path or something like that? All of a sudden, all I heard was, wham, they hit them, uh, the, um, the, the landing gear, you, boom, and then I heard David go, boom, and pull that plane. Boy, that jet, I went, uh-oh. And Angeli, I call her Bubbles. She was bubbling. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Oh, what's going on? And I can tell David when he gets mad. You know, David would never really express himself when he was single. But after he's unmarried or really. <laughs> I said, she's, she's brought him out. You know what I mean? She's brought him out. Boy, I can see him. What are you doing? Boy, he got on the ground. I, I, I want to know what happened. I mean, those things do happen at times. Now, it was almost an accident. Thank God it wasn't. But even if they were accidents, the Holy Spirit will guide you through them. Let me say it again. Let me write that. We want you to write it down. He will lead you even through the accidents of life. And sometimes we do have accidents. Emotional accidents. Sometimes we say things we don't want to say. We wish you could take them back because words hurt worse than rocks. Because a rock wound will heal. But sometimes word wounds never do heal. You follow what I'm saying? And, and you, so you, he will even lead you through the accident. Well, he's supposed to stop it from accident. No, 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 no. We stop ourselves from accidents. Sometimes we do foolish things. How many times you went through a light that wasn't red, it wasn't yellow, it was pink? <laughs> Hold your hand up, be honest. <laughs> Look at Mark. <laughs> oh, man, pink. It's not red. And, 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 and I love Kenny. Kenny, Kenny. I love to listen to Kenny. He, he's a state trooper. Some of the Kenny should write a book of what people say when you stop people. <laughs> Kenny could write a that would be a best selling book I mean, after, because you get Kenny said he he stopped black women and they they tell him that first thing they tell him he said they said listen we listen to black radio. <laughs> what that got to do with you speeding ninety miles an hour? <laughs> I mean Kenny can give you some wonderful statement about what people say. My daughter, Jody, she's a blessing. One time, somebody messed up her hair with a perm. That was that's Jody right there. Isn't she beautiful? Look at that girl. Don't, I used to look like that. I used to actually look like her when I was young. But she was so mad. They messed up her hair. I don't know. This is years and years ago with a perm or something. You know how perm, whoop, just something. Anyway, and she driving too fast. And some cop pulled her over. And he said, what do you, you she was going to repair it. And man, she was just all just frustrated and all that kind of stuff. And he was telling, and he jumps. I can't get all of the whole thing was, what's the matter? You know, why are you going this fast? And she said, listen, I, I have a problem. It's a tragedy here. And he said, why are you going this fast? She just pulled us down. See this? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> he had a hair in a clip. He had a hair in a clip. Just and I think he told her, my wife had the same problem. Go, girl. <laughs> just go, girl. <laughs> go ahead and get over there. Women funny about their hair. Ain't no telling what a policeman's going to hit. So he will even lead you through the accidents of life. Now, let me close with this. And this is probably the most important point of this. I am not interested in man's theories or his opinions. I want to know his convictions. I'm not interested in your, in your opinions or your theories. I want, I want to know about your convictions. Why? That's what leads you. The Holy Spirit leads you through your convictions. See, not through your opinions or through your theories. For example, I tried that and it didn't work. You know, I used to go to that church, covenant church, or, or I used to follow Jesse to pray, man, I don't do it anymore because that faith business don't work. And let me tell you why. Faith works if you work it. Amen. But let me help you. I'm not going to be critical of that person. So they'll leave this church or they'll leave our ministry and go to another ministry. See, they put their light under a bushel. Wait, 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 wait. But it's still burning. 
See, and a lot of ministers will say, well, let God in it, you know, and just speak it. No, no, no. They, they may have put their light under a bushel. They went to the church in the small portion. See, but they're still burning. They're still people of faith, but they're not people of like precious faith. And what the scripture says on the higher levels of Christianity, Peter says, go read it. He says, I'm looking for people of like precious faith. So when someone goes that can't handle prosperity, that can't handle healing, they love it. They still love God. They're still people of faith, but they put their light under a bushel. But it's still burning. So you that don't have that, don't criticize that. They still love the Lord. You see what I'm saying? They're embarrassed. They stood on faith and it didn't work. It embarrassed them. And somebody found out about it, so they left. They got embarrassed. See? But they're still people. They're still lovely people. They still love God. They just can't handle it. I call it the church of small portion. You're still eating. Have you ever went out to a fine restaurant? They charge you hundreds of dollars and they give you a steak so small. You go, what's the matter? You think I'm on a diet? Huh? Nah. Why do y'all like buffets? How many of y'all like buffets? Oh yeah, I'm going to tell you why. Because see, when you get served a la carte, they give you what they think you need. But when you go to a buffet, you get what you want. Because you see, when you get what you want, you destroy all your need. Oh, that's a revelation there, baby. That's why you like buffets. Je- Jesse Brown's ministry and Covenant Church is the church of the buffet. You understand? Now, Kathy likes to be served. So I go to the buffet and get it for her. Bring it back. You didn't tell him that, did you? Glory to God. Just tell him about the cold milk. You didn't tell him about me going to that buffet table and bring you back some stuff. Come on, woman. Say something. Why? Why? Why do people like buffets? Get what you want. I love those people that are on diets and they go to buffets. I'm going to eat a salad. <laughs> and, you, and that platter is this big. And that salad look like Mount Everest, boy. And they don't get a little dressing. They get the whole crock and just pour that on there. And they got ranch dressing. <laughs> I'm losing weight. No, you're not. <laughs> Let me say it again. I'm not interested in your opinions or your theories. I'm interested in your convictions. See, as many are led by the spirit of God, they're sons of God. How be it when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you in all truth. Ha ha. It's all done through conviction. Not theories or opinions. Your road to somewhere has another on it. So everywhere I go, the Holy Spirit is in front of me. And I kind of like this. Psalms chapter 23, the last verse. Says, surely, goodness and mercy. Surely. That's not a woman's name. <laughs> surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Why? Because Shirley said it. <laughs> surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my. Whoa, whoa. Oh, what about all this junk? That's the accidents of life. He's still following me. I'm never alone. I got goodness and mercy following me. Now, why do they follow me? And I will dwell in the house. It didn't say I'll come only with special speakers that I like. Well, we lost a few of you right there. You can tell when it hits, right? (laughs) Hmm, No, no, dwell, habitate in the house of the Lord. Forever. So Heather, everywhere you go, goodness and mercy is following you. Glory to God. Think about that. And don't let nobody tell you different. Why? Because Shirley said it. <laughs> Shirley. When Kathy goes to the mall. Shirley will buy something. <laughs> okay with me. It's not her opinion about it. It's not her theory about it. It's her conviction. She's led. <laughs> She's led to. (laughs) Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Gotcha. 
She's led the Louis Vuitton. She's led the Chanel and Escada and Christian Dior. <laughs> I'm led to the Golden Corral. <laughs> You know. Oh, Catholic, no, we can't say that. Catholic don't like it. Anyway, praise the Lord. She's led. I feel led of the Lord. That's okay. That's fine. That's her conviction. <laughs> Kathy almost did a commercial on me yesterday. I close with this. You ladies come. She did a commercial. She come walking up to me with this outfit on. She says, do I look fat? My buddy, I went, what? No. No. She goes, thank you, Jesus. It was a great spiritual moment for her. I wasn't lying. I don't really care about that, to tell you the truth. Now, you ladies, you should have shouted. I don't care if you get fat. I don't care if you get skinny. It really ain't none of my business. And that includes my wife. She do what she want to do. And she'll say, uh, let's go watch a movie in the theater tonight. I said, okay. I said, well, you want something to eat? No, no, I'm not eating nothing. We're just going to watch a movie. I said, all right. So I'm sitting there. And I can see it. She starts twitching. And I said, when you can tell the ice cream demon is coming. She starts twitching. <laughs> see, it's her conviction about it. She said, that you can't watch a movie without ice cream or popcorn. She starts twitching. Then she wants me to make the mistake. Uh, do you want something? I said, no. I said, I'll just, maybe you said we're not going to eat nothing. Watching watch the movies. We're going, you know, trying to cut back. After a while, man, forget this. We're blessed of the Lord. <laughs> she goes in there. <laughs> She takes that lid off that pint and you forget the lid, throw it away because the pint's gone. <laughs> now, I, I said, boy, that devil, man, is getting. And I see, I hear something going. Chick, 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 and I look in the pocket, there's two payday candies. <laughs> <laughs> pint <of> ice cream <laughs> and some popcorn. And she says, I didn't eat much lunch. Oh, OK. <laughs> That's fine. Guys. I didn't eat much lunch. That's good. That's all right with me. It don't make no difference. That's her conviction. See, she's being led. <laughs> so I said, don't get mad when you're led to a bigger size dress. <laughs> <laughs> Just call it being led. That's all you got to say. <laughs> I was led <laughs> to go from a size four. You ain't seen a four in 40 years. But anyway, <laughs> oh, I just... Hey, hey, come on. I even don't know what a four is. <laughs> Boy, I th you ever notice you go to Walmart, you go to a very expensive store, you buy really expensive clothes, it's a six. But at Walmart, it's a 14. <laughs> You honestly believe you live aware in a six. Now, I don't know what a six is. I don't care what a six is. I don't care. If you happy, I'm happy. See? So I close with this. <laughs> Y'all pray for me today and we'll make the sign of the cross. No <laughs> feeling. Better to something. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Did you enjoy it this morning? It's many are led. So remember this. There's a comforter. He's the guide. There's a prince of peace. On that road in your journey. Even through the accidents of life. And if you'll believe his word. Decree his word. Declare his word. Like even when she was talking about the offering teacher. We, don't, we never think twice about not giving God in our tithe. Actually what we think about is how much, how much, 
how more generous can we be in our offering? Especially if the Lord blesses us. Riches are made for use, not storage. You, when you store them, you start trusting them. That doesn't mean you shouldn't save money. Don't take that out of context. I believe in saving money, but not storing money. I love people's dreams when they tell me about what they're going to give. I don't think Marty or Miami saying that when he, they came to the house the other night. I get these time warts. It's probably been a couple of three weeks now. I guess. And we were sat there. We were having, playing the game, having fun. And he talked about, told me about his dream of what he wants to do in his giving. And it just blessed me. I told him about what I want to do. It's a blessing. See, you got a dream. And you know what? I realized that the Lord led us to those dreams. And dreams have no expiration dates. Give Jesus a hand clap for that. 